I challenged myself to make a game in one week using a game engine called Pico 8, a fantasy console, something that never existed but was made to mimic 8-bit retro consoles of the past, with limitations like a 16 color palette, a 128 by 128 display, and limited memory. Fun fact, the wildly popular indie hit Celeste was originally made as a Pico 8 game in a game jam. I've never used it before, and the reason for the challenge is to give myself an excuse to learn the programming language that it uses, Lua. And the reason for learning Lua? The play date. It's a new handheld console that's coming out early 2022, and I'm getting my hands on one of the first 10,000 units. And it too uses Lua, and I'm trying to get a head start on development, and I thought this was a fun way to do so. Anyways, let's see how it went. My plan was to make a sort of virtual pet game, like Tamagotchi, Neopets, or Duck Life if anyone's played that on cool math games. Where you take care of your pet, but you can also play as a pet in some sort of mini game. So I made some art for the pets, and then added in the ability to walk around. I also added in a transition to what I planned to be the area where you take care of your pet and give it upgrades, along with a placeholder title screen. That's all I managed to get done that day since I was trying to wrap my head around how everything worked since it was so different from game engines like Unity or Godot, where a lot of things are given to you out of the box. On Saturday, I had no work, so I ended up getting a lot of stuff done. I decided to make it a run and shoot type game, so I added this bullet attack, along with a skull enemy I can shoot and kill. I added a health system, along with a simple enemy AI that just moves straight towards you. If you noticed, the sprites flash red, which I added along with giving the player some invincibility frames after being damaged. And of course, the last big change was changing the pet sprites completely. These tall birds were okay, but I liked the little ones a little bit more. I added a gecko, a chicken, a goose, and a rat. No particular reason why I picked those animals. They were just easy to draw with the colors available and the 8x8 sprite constraint. I did add the rat though because I like rats and I have two of them as pets. I also added a crosshair too, which I forgot to mention. I started off by having the pet wander around randomly. Then, my main plan for this day was to make a shop where you can buy upgrades for your pet. For that, I needed some buttons, that was easy. which I needed to manually create, including checking whether or not the mouse was within the bounds of the button, and checking for a mouse click, which is given to you out of the box in a lot of other game engines. I made some sprites for an attack upgrade, a speed upgrade, and an attack cooldown upgrade. I then added a new cursor to indicate the buttons are clickable, along with a coin sound effect, and a sound effect to let you know that you don't have enough money. It's a small game, so these little UX touches go a long way. On Monday, I added buttons that allow you to buy the different types of pets and switch between them. Each pet I can customize to have different stats like their movement speed, how much health they have, among other things, to incentivize buying different ones. I really wanted to have it so that each pet had their own different types of attacks, along with like some sort of movement ability, like a dash or a roll, but there was not a lot of time, and I needed to add a bunch of things to the game still. So this would have to do. Here, I implemented the functionality of the upgrades. So for example, if I buy the speed upgrade, I can clearly move much faster. My plan for the arena was to have waves of enemies come after you. So I started implementing a spawning system that would start spawning in the skulls. And then I tweaked it to start spawning on the edges of the screen. I also added in earning money after you kill a certain number of enemies. Tuesday was a big art day. I made a new enemy, the ghoul, along with adding a little bit of grass and flowers to the background. I also made the buttons look a little bit better. It's not perfect, but it would have to do. It was a slow day because I actually had a trip planned to go to Vancouver. In hindsight, it was probably a bad time to do the challenge, but whatever. I'll catch you back in a bit. After a fun trip, I got back to work on the game with just two days remaining. My first course of action was making a third and final enemy, this terrifying clown that has more health and moves faster. I then implemented a wave system that requires you to defeat a certain number of enemies before moving on to the next wave, and each wave spawning enemies progressively faster and with a higher likelihood of spawning more difficult enemies, which in this case means more ghouls, 
and more clowns. At this point, the game was basically feature complete, and it just needed some balance changes and extra polishing. I tried to balance the wave difficulty along with how the upgrades worked, which based off of my wife's playtesting seemed okay. Definitely not perfect, but good enough for a one-week challenge. I created a simple title screen, and I went with the name Pew Pew Pets because you have pets that, that pew pew. And of course, I added the most important feature, being able to pet the pet. If you agree that this is the most important feature, maybe consider dropping a like? Helps me out a lot. And that was it for the day. A mad dash towards the end to get everything finalized. The final day was just spent making the music for the game. I created this simple kind of Poke Center esque beat for the non battle part of the game. And then without really meaning to, I made this somewhat spooky sounding battle music, which I guess fits with the skull and ghoul theme I have going on. Nothing too special with the music, I never made a song or beat before, but I thought it was a decent stab at it. And after all that, it was finished. I learned a lot about Lua, so in that sense I'm quite happy because I achieved my main objective and made a fun small game out of it. If you want to check it out, you can play it for free in your browser with the link down below in the description. If you beat the game, which is getting past wave 10, I made a little easter egg so you get 9000 gold so you can do something ridiculous like this. So if you want to try that, you'll have to beat the game. If you liked the video, consider subscribing as I'm also planning on doing another game and one week challenge for another game engine called Love2D. See you next time!